Hey, welcome to JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and we do fountain pens and paper and ink. In fact, I just did an ink review. So let's put the link up there, and you go check that out. But not till after this review, because you might want to put that ink in. Th that would actually be really cool. That ink in this pen. This is the Sailor Compass, and I have the clear demonstrator. They're all demonstrators, but this is the clear version. And, and, do you notice anything about it? Ah, well, maybe you noticed it's part of the Sailor 1911 family, but made with a more affordable steel nib and a different acrylic. Or maybe you noticed it comes in a big white box, like some kind of apple thing. No? Maybe. Maybe you noticed it comes with a converter. Is somebody listening? Did somebody actually say, these people in these videos, they're always saying, where are all the converters? And maybe finally they said, hey, right there. Well, that's what we got today. So let's flip the camera. We'll talk about what I like about the pen, don't like about the pen, uh, and get a writing sample and all that good stuff. Let's go. All right, let's see what comes in the Sailor Compass box. Now, obviously, I've had this out already because I've been writing with this pen. This is not just a first impressions review. I've had it for weeks now, actually. And that is the pen. It comes in that plastic pen sleeve. And I've already got a cartridge in there. I'll t we'll take a closer look at that later. As you open the box, you will find that you get a Sailor converter, which I mentioned earlier because it, it is proprietary, but it's always awesome when they include the converter. And this one is clear, so you get just a, a typical converter with kind of a, uh, an opaque uh, white knob. Now, if you get it in the other colors, and I'll put a picture up of what colors are available, then those converters are color-coded, keyed, however you want to say that, to the pen that you've gotten. So, little instruction there on how to use a converter if you're not familiar, always nice. It comes with two, not one, but two black ink cartridges from Sailor. And again, proprietary, so it's nice that you get both a converter and two uh, cartridges. And then you get your uh, writing instructions and all of that good stuff. So, I won't bore you by opening all of that, but it's in there. If you buy the pen, you get it. So let's get all of that out of the way. All right, so let's take a closer look at the pen itself. Now this is from the 1911 family of pens that Sailor makes, so that has that shape, and it is that cigar or torpedo shape, however you like to refer to that. One thing, and I hope you can see this uh, in the video, is that, you know, clear pen is a clear pen, right? No. Uh, quality of ac acrylic does vary, and sometimes you don't notice so much until you put them up to other pens. But this acrylic is really clear. It was one of the things that I noticed when I took it out of the box. When I handed it to my wife, she noticed the same thing. This is just a really nice clear. If you're, I know that's a weird thing uh, to make a big deal out of, but uh, clarity of the acrylic, uh, you know, that speaks to quality of the materials and things like that. And I was impressed with just how clear it really is. I had originally set out to get the blue version of this pen, but that seems to be the one in the highest demand because it went out fast, and so I missed my opportunity on that one. But I'm, I'm a sucker for a clear demonstrator, and so I really do like this, and I am impressed again with how well it's done. So it's nicely done, nicely polished, all that good stuff. Uh, materials, build quality, I think, uh, just excellent uh, for the price range too. I think really quite good, and so I, uh, you won't be disappointed where those things are concerned. Of course, it has their standard clip, and that's springy yet stiff, so that's good. Uh, at the top of the cap is that insert, and at the bottom as well. Just kind of let you get a look at all of the pin. One thing I like is on the band has Japan. I'm going to go backwards, right? Let's start here. It says Sailor, and it's all nicely done, made in Japan. Okay, So it's a clear demonstrator. There's not a lot for me to show you there except for to let you kind of just take a, a look and think what you want to think yourself. Imagine that. All right, so take the cap off. I should count, shouldn't I? I should count probably. So we get 
Whoop, hello, I'm tightening. One, two, and just a little over two turns takes the cap off. And all right, let's look at the nib and I'll throw some specifications up there while we do. Uh, this is a, of course, again, a steel nib. It is a medium fine. So it writes very similar to my Pilot. I have a Prera in fine and a Metropolitan in fine and very similarly in terms of line width and things like that. It has a little bit different feel, uh, but we'll see that in the in the writing test sample. But I like it and it has a different feel. I actually prefer it to my Prera in terms of the, the nib. I, I think so. I've written with it enough now. I think I actually prefer this. Uh, that's, and that's really saying something. That actually is a pretty comparable pen in terms of price. I think I paid within a dollar or two the same for this pen and for my Prera. It has a clear section. Excuse me. Yes, clear everything, right? But a clear feed. That's what I was going to say. Uh, a clear feed in that clear section. Although I have black ink in it. I put the cartridge that came with it. I, I kind of have a tendency to let the cartridge that came from the factory be the first ink I try in a pen. I don't always do it, but but I usually do that. Uh, especially, especially a pen like this where uh, they make their own ink. So that's why that's just a black ink. I don't use black all the time at all. Not even half the time. But now and then. And I, and I like Sailor's Black Ink, but it does make it a little bit hard to see that. <laughs> that uh, it would be a more vibrant color it looks really cool in here. So there you go. And this is their cartridge. And of course, it did come with a converter as well. And, and that will go in just as soon as I use this ink up because I'm going to swap colors in this pen, something that will really show off that demonstrator and that clear feed. But that's the very simple design of the uh, Sailor Compass. Ah, poked myself with the nib there. See, I told you it was clear. It was so clear I couldn't tell which side of the cap the nib was on. <laughs> All right, let's do the writing test because I think that's probably what most are in a hurry to get to. All right, so let's take a look at this pen and see how it writes. The cap, by the way, does post securely and has a really nice balance to it when you do. So this is... The Sailor Compass. And it is a medium fine. I'll do a comparison to a fine here in just a second. And this is Sailor's Black Ink. That's just the cartridge that comes with the pen. Okay. Now, hopefully you can hear. I'm going to be quiet. Hopefully you hear the pen and not the uh, the traffic outside or anything like that. There's a lot of it. It's Friday night and everybody's going to the football game. Although tickets are limited thanks to COVID, right? Got to get them too far ahead. I didn't get any. Pretty dry. I just really like the way this pen writes. There's something about it. It's smooth. It has a nice feedback, but not a lot, not a lot at all. Um, my microphone may even, sometimes my phone when I stop talking it, uh, or my camera rather, it overcompensates for the quiet and ups the volume Make, giving you a bit of a false impression sometimes of how loud or quiet a pen may be. All right, so you get the idea there. There's a smoothness that I really like. The diameter and the feel of the section are really nice. I think it's it, it, very comfortable in hand, and so I like that. Now the threads, it's a short section, so the threads I kind of tend to hold back a little bit, and so I'm holding on those threads. They're not uncomfortable. I do notice they're there, uh, but uh, they're not bad at all. It's not Some can be pretty sharp. These are not bad, but I do, 
I do definitely feel those. But the balance of the pen is nice. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, you're not getting line variation, okay? I'm not even trying to, there's no flex, it's not like that. It's a hard steel nib. Uh, but you notice that as you write, there still is, you can see it in there, there's some variation and it's subtle, but it, it's nice in the way that it, it gives character uh, to your writing. And so I like that. I like that there is a smoothness. That's going to be a plus. And I don't run into too many just horribly scratchy nibs anyway, but, but it does happen. This is not going to be one. I will say this, uh, and I'll put a picture up. Uh, some other people have noticed that when you get this pen, you're going to need to clean a little bit of lint out of the nib. There's just a small little uh, bit of lint, and I'm thinking it's probably from someone's glove, maybe in the putting on of the nib, and it's just getting caught in there at the factory. Uh, but do that before. Make sure you flush it out and and do that with every pen when you get it. But you'll need to with this one because I'm not the only one who's who's found that. That's that's a thing. But it's smooth. It has just a very light feedback. Uh, very light. Not even. Uh, it'd be a very smooth pencil. Uh, it's more, and I think I've heard other people say this about uh, their nibs anyway, uh, if I'm remembering the right pen. It all kind of runs together some days. But I believe I've heard other people say their impression of other Sailor pens, not this one, that there is a an audible feedback that's kind of unique to Sailor. And, and, and there is. Uh, the feedback is more sound, actually, than feel. I like it. Okay, maybe you don't, maybe you do, uh, but I do, I like that, and, and the feedback overall is light. Is there anything I don't like? Well, I wouldn't say it's not a, a don't like, I, I hesitate to even call it a negative. Uh, in terms of the style, I like it, okay, I really like it, but the style is, uh, how would I want to word this? It's very familiar. And of course, it's familiar because it's Sailor. It's not like they copy. I'm not saying anything like that. People copy Sailor. Uh, but it's just, it is such a traditional pen and, and so familiar in a classic shape, which I like. Okay, this is not a negative in that sense. I probably shouldn't put uh, that mark there to make it look like it's negative. I would call this uh, just a, a neutral thing. I'm going to put it in for neutral. Um, You'll like it or you won't like it, but here's the cool thing about it. If you if you want something that is maybe squared off on the ends, something that looks more like a Pro Gear Slim, well, they have the Sailor LeCool. It's, from what I understand, it's the same nib, basically the same function, uh, just in that style. So if, uh, maybe this caught your attention because it was new, but you would like that uh, squared off end a little bit better, the LeCool, is out there and so that there's going to be that of course that also is quite familiar and conser conservative familiar and conservative i think that's what i'm thinking of again i'm not saying these are negative i can't spell it while i'm talking <laughs> anyway i'm not i'm thinking too much about what i'm saying uh anyway i think you get what i'm saying it's just a very familiar it's not breaking any new ground uh or anything like that. So where, like, uh, if you get the Nexo instead of the Loom, both the Nexo and the Loom, they're different. There's something new when they came out. This is, is not. It's different materials. It's uh, the steel nib. And, and so that can be, I say neutral, because if you really like Sailor's shape and style, and maybe you've had experience with this nib and the look cool, you're really going to like this pen. And I don't have a look cool, but I really like this bit. So that would be the neutral. On negative, well, you know, there's, there's the, uh, there is proprietary cartridges. I'm going to put that down, uh, that the cartridges are proprietary. Uh, just because, oh man, what am I going to do? I hope that's right, because it's Friday night and I'm tired. Uh, and I've already blown one word. You're going to think I lost my entire vocabulary. Anyway, overall, what do I think about the pen? I like it. I think it is comfortable. It's very well made, which you would expect both for the price and for uh, the company. It is a simple design. 
And even though I just said all of that about neutral and blah, 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 uh, I like simplicity. And in a, in a demonstrator, simplicity can be really cool. It's going to show off your ink really well. And it's going to write that ink very well. And so uh, in that regard, very, very much like this pen. Of course, Sailor has a great reputation. They stand behind their product. It's very well made. Uh, you can tell even just by the ring around here, which is just a step up from a lot of the other companies, it's it's a really nicely done pen. Not over the top or anything like that, but a really nicely done pen. Okay, so let's do a size comparison here. I mentioned the Prera, and I, I said I was going to do a little bit of a comparison uh, of the uh, the nib. So this is the Prera with a Pilot Fine. Blue, so a little bit different. But you see how close that is? Just really really close. So that's the Pereira. That gives you an idea of what, if you're not familiar with a medium fine, that gives you some idea. It's, you know, not even a hair's width difference, I think, between those two. But that's the size difference between the Prera and the Sailor compass and this is the Faber Castell Hexo which I happen to have just here nearby a little bit well a lot thicker pen and a different style and and geometry there uh, but really not as long it's it's close I mean really really close maybe I shouldn't say it's not as long that may be within a hair's difference too here is a Lamy uh, Safari next to that which is a longer pen than the Sailor. And then, let me move that over here. Here is the Platinum Plazer, another pen that is less expensive than the Sailor Compass or the Prera, uh, but writes similarly. I will say this, out of these pens, uh, when it comes to preference for the nib and how the nib writes, ah, oh man, maybe I don't want to give you a preference. That one's really tough. These are all good. They're all very good. Really like the Lamy Fine, but that's going to be thicker. It's a Western Fine. Uh, this is a medium, so I won't talk about that one. This, really similarly, but there's something about the feel of the Sailor that I think I like just a little bit better. Not quite sure what it is, but I like it just a little bit better uh, than the Prera, but love both pens. And then, of course, the Platinum Plazer, same thing. I definitely like, I would put it Compass, Prera, Plazer, if I were comparing those three. They all have a very, very similar line width. So I think that's a very simple, uh, or a very good comparison to make. And I would I'd go here, here, and here. Price, of course, the Plazer is really hard to beat. Uh, nice pin. But I'd still spring for the for the Compass. I think it's that good. I really like it. I think they've hit, they've hit the nail on the head, which is not surprising. And I do. I recommend that pin if that's a... a a price range you're looking for and a style and everything, and you're happy with a medium fine nib. Really great pen. Really like it. All right. God bless you. Have a great week, and I'll see you soon with another ink or pen or I don't know what I'm going to review next. We'll just have to spin the wheel and see. Have a great week.